So next up we'll have Natalia Fernandez, who is going to speak to us as a representative of migrants and ethnic minorities for reproductive justice. Thanks for coming, Natalia. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us here. Marriage is a group of migrants and ethnic minorities fighting for reproductive justice, where women with different nationalities, ethnic backgrounds, ages, and many come from countries with access to abortion. We use this privilege to ensure our migrant sisters, in worse of circumstances than ours, have a strong voice in this debate. Ireland's current laws on abortion violate women's and girls' rights, including their rights to health, equality, and non-discrimination, non information, privacy, and freedom fr from torture and other ill treatment. Marriage campaigns to express the need to eliminate the specific access barriers impacting marginalized groups, including young women, asylum seekers, undocumented migrants, women or girls with limited financial means, and members of the traveling community. The Eighth Am Migrants. The Eighth Amendment has denied women in Ireland access to abortion or comprehensive health care while pregnant. He also declines the ordinar ordinary right to consent to medical treatment, as if your cognitive reason is affected by the mere fact of being pregnant. Yet migrants are doubly, doubly affected by this amendment, not only by the restriction to abortion, but restricted to also travel. Under the 13th Amendment, women are granted the right to travel to access abortions abroad, to bring their shame somewhere else. Yet, this privilege is not accessible to migrants and ethnic minority women, as they face incredible, incredible levels of bureaucracy in order to travel. Access to abortion under the eighth, eighth is, is time sensitive. Organizing finance, finances and traveling arrangements is an impossible task for undocumented migrants, those on low incomes or restricted freedoms of movement who are basically forced to give birth if they become pregnant regardless of the circumstances. Traveling is not possible for many women, such as girls, women from socioeconomical marginalized groups, such as travelers and asylum seekers. This leaves these women to access unsafe abortions to the, due to the legislative ban the eighth imposes in Ireland. And because of their precarious residence status, many women are afraid to travel. Many women from ethnic minorities find themselves in situations of isolation, poverty, and exploitation, being through sexual violence, or may even be pregnant through rape. The McMahon Report urged the immediate and clear need for arrangements to be made to enable women in direct provision experiencing crisis pregnancies to access proper supports, including provisions for traveling abroad, presumably to enable, equal, enable them equal to access abortion services. He also recommended that a review by the relevant organizations of services for persons in the system experiencing a crisis pregnancy be undertaken immediately with a view to a protocol being agreed to guide the state agencies and NGOs supporting such persons. Particular attention should be paid to address the needs of the individual in the context of the legislative framework. Issues relating to travel documents, financial assistance, confidentiality, and access to information and support services should be addressed. The Irish Family Planning Association states that asylum-seeking women seeking an abortion face incredible obstacles in trying to travel abroad in order to access terminations. The IFPA has raised the concerns with the, EU, the UN Human Rights Committee and expressed the necessity to severity of the restrictive laws on abortion with the government. We cannot forget Ms. Y, one of the first women to have her case assessed by a panel convened under Section 9 of the Protection of Life During Pregnancy Act. The treatment given by medical practitioners to Ms. Y at her arrival in Ireland after escaping the abuse received in her country of origin is a clear breach of basic human rights by the Irish state and the failure of European immigration and border policies that also restrain her from access and abortion. Given her status as an asylum seeker, she should have been trying to find out about abortion while negotiating with various state and independent agencies on an income of 19 euros a week, with no knowledge of how things work in Ireland, with little in, in the way of, support, of a support network, and with no freedom of movement, given her precarious migration status. All women should receive, receive care that is respectful of their human rights, dignity, and autonomy. The refusal of an abortion despite medical practitioners assessing 
The high risk of suicide of Miss White was cruel and inhumane. And Savita refused treatment as you are in a Catholic country now. Before she died, the Supreme, the Supreme Court said that Article 40.3.3 of the Irish Constitution adopted by the Eighth Amendment in 1983 authorized a termination of pregnancy when there was a real and substantial risk to a pregnant woman's life as distinct from her health, including a risk of self-destruction. But women have no clear and effectively means of implementing that constitutional right and accessing such care. This is the reason why the European Court of Human Rights found that Article 8, right to a private life, has been violated. She had a domestic right to, to a life-saving abortion. Also the death of Bimbo Anawa, seven months pregnant, for uterine rupture. Call it a medical misadventure. Caused by the administration of misoprostol to induce labor. Misoprostol is an off-label drug which cannot be used when there has been previous scarring or perforation of the uterus, although there was a scarring due to a previous termination. Her screams were not heard. Neither her death was given a full investigation. And the way other voices have been silenced, one in every four women giving birth in Ireland, Ireland and no Irish, making migrants 24% of all women giving birth, also accounting for 39% of all maternity deaths, presenting the high risk of migrants and ethnic minority women in this country, and also raising the issue of how poorly maternity service engaged with these women. The McMahon Report. The former of justice, Brian McMahon, published a letter on the 4th of May calling for the retention of the Eighth Amendment. It must be mentioned that McMahon, a strong urging for a no vote, suggests that he has forgotten the recommendations of the working group on direct provision that he presented in 2015, which urged quite the opposite. The focus group working on direct provision and the McMahon report can be criticized in far too many ways. Yet we need to address the terrible circumstances faced by women experiencing crisis pregnancies in direct provision was welcomed. The horrific treatment of Ms. White can only be addressed by removing the Eighth Amendment from the Constitution and making sure that all women and pregnant people can access the supports that they need in this country. Both groups, groups AIMS and MERGE have voiced how this extends beyond abortion access to the whole issue of reproductive services and health care for migrant and ethnic minority women in this state. The women who have disproportionately been affected by the Eighth Amendment are migrant and ethnic minority. McMahon calls to vote now, strongly portrays the hypocrisies of the traditional views of the judici judiciary, who chose to ignore the evidence of the humane, in, inhumane character of this state's constitution. When this referendum passes, we need to be aware Consensus objection is already present in the Protection of Life During Pregnancy Act 2013, and it will carry over to the new legislation. This will allow practitioners, practitioners to refuse participation on abortion procedures, and entire hospitals could also opt out. However, they will have to refer women to another service who will carry out the procedures. Although access to healthcare is free for asylum seekers living in direct provision, and therefore therefore has no legislative basis. Once in direct provision, they receive medical care, which allow them to attend only local doctors or general practitioners who are located in or attend the accommodation centers. Due to the conscious objection, we're in fear that people in direct provision, mainly in rural areas, will be forced to travel to other locations, probably Dublin, and stay over for the 72 hours waiting period, three days which will put them at risk of losing their accommodation as they face a maximum of two nights away restrictions. We're worried about mental health. We know the ma majority of maternal deaths are caused by suicide, and also that 39% of these maternal deaths are migrants. With the proposed legislation in Ireland between 12 weeks and viability, a woman can only access abortion if her life is at risk or serious harm, a very restricted restrictive tests for pregnancy occurring as a result of rape. We believe that women are in the best position to decide the outcomes of their pregnancies and can be trusted to make the decisions that are best for them in the light of their own moral and religious beliefs and their own personal situations. We are also committed to creating conditions within which within real reproductive choice might be exercised simply by the autonomy. The referendum is just the first step. We face a long fight ahead of us, engaging in different struggles. 
MERS will continue to ensure that migrants and ethnic minority groups will be, ne will be equal participants and have a voice in the broader campaign. We demand equal reproductive justice, patient-centered treatment, free of misogyny and racism together with sexual health services in Ireland. From the referendum, referendum till the legislation is passed, we will continue to assist migrants and ethnic minorities to access abortions and fighting for the reproductive justice. Thank you very much. <laughs>